Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Wednesday, August 9th, 2017. I wanted to go over the commodities in this video. I made mention yesterday, and you've been covering these quite a bit this year. Uh, you know, I shared my thoughts. You know, the broad market, the trend has been resilient, uh, but I think the risk to reward is absolutely awful, and uh, you don't have to trade the broad markets. A lot of people like to, for whatever reason. I know they're liquid to trade SPY and QQQ and those type of things, but. Uh, Again, um, teach your own if you're successfully trading uh, the broad markets, uh, more power to you. Um, if you've been reading the headlines lately, they've talked about how volatility has reached extreme low levels. Price, The price range in the S&P 500, oh God, I'm trying to remember, it's something like 1918 or something. We go back forever. So we're seeing some extreme compression in, 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 um, in the daily gyrations. Market's gone nowhere lately, uh, so really, unless you're a high frequency running a high frequency trading operation, you know, with computers doing your trading, trying to scalp pennies, you know, on millions of shares, I don't see how a swing trader is making money in this market on the broad markets. With that being said, focus on where there's opportunities, and there's been plenty of that lately. So uh, I continue to harp on the commodities in and out. Um, here's a couple. We'll just dive into the charts. UNG now UNG given these, especially the natural gas track and ETF are notorious for uh, not doing a good job uh, due to all the, the you know the, the tracking error they have between the actual commodity uh, natural gas itself however uh, a lot of you guys like to trade these so we'll look at the chart you can see a big powerful divergent low on UNG um, it's starting to move up and it's also if we take a look here at um, you know it's it's around its previous highs again not as important on the etn as it is on on actual natural gas we'll look at that chart here in a second but uh we do have a divergent low we had a divergent low here and a second confirmed it's just really one large extension of a, a divergent low really so uh this may be bottoming it looks to me to be bottoming the risk to reward is infinitely better on a lot of these commodities that I'm going to go over right now than it is in the stock market, in my opinion. Um, again, that's my opinion. Uh, do what you want. But uh, I think commodities are certainly not, it wouldn't put your whole portfolio in there. And, and I continue to harp on, on one point about it. I'm very selective. All commodities are not created equal. They all have their different, I'm bearish on some, bullish on others. So uh, nat gas uh, looks pretty good. And let's just take a look at the uh, chart of the uh, continuous futures con. Okay, this is off stock charts. Uh, now, this only gives me an end of day, um, but I can tell you the futures are up today. Net gas is trading up. Uh, so, again, these are end of day, meaning they take the continuous futures contract, which is sort of splicing all the futures contracts together because futures always have uh, expiration dates. And this gives you a much better idea of how prices have acted um, over time. And you can see the same thing. Most importantly, here, let me move this chart up so you can see the time frame on the bottom 2016 2017 here uh this is a longer time span than the chart we were just looking at i think we're looking at a well this one's about two and two and a half years uh so same story the, the most important thing are these divergent lows and divergent highs um that's pretty much my trading style to a large extent involves just it's wash rinse repeat you know look for divergent highs and look for divergent lows we had a divergent low back here um and that led to this giant rally we had uh, as i no i have to exit these annotations here uh, we had a divergent high right there you can see the negative divergence on the uh, rsi right here almost but not quite on the ppo but that still makes it a divergent high at that point i should have extended that trend line there was a big correction um we didn't have a divergent uh, low but we were oversold uh, oversold readings as you can see back here let's just box these in you know these are just things you look for and when you can get the oversold readings in conjunction with uh positive divergence like we had back there it's also it's not drawn here we had bullish divergence on the ppo uh, that's actually but just cut off to the bottom of the screen. Uh, sorry about that. And now we have a divergent low right here. So that's bullish. And today's pop did bring us above. It'll be reflected after the close today when they update this end of day chart. Uh, it's taken us up here. You can see these are potential targets or resistance levels here on that gas. So that one uh, looks good. Um, looks good near term and uh, for an intermediate, you know, swing trade that could last weeks or months. But I will warn you, if you haven't traded it before, natural gas is volatile. So um, just, you know, be careful with your position sizing. Okay, let's run through the rest of these a little quicker. 
Oil is one of a couple of ETNs to track the price of crude oil. This one's more of a pure play on just, um, I think, West Texas Intermediate Crude, if I'm not mistaken, whereas USO has heating oil and other types of oil in there along with uh, WTI. Um, again, that's going from memory. But you can see a high-level uh, potential, not yet confirmed, bearish PPO cross. These are bearish crosses you can see to the left here. Um, especially, well, they can come at high levels. They can come you know, below pretty much any bearish cross on the PPO and just follow it up. You can look at your own chart yourself or use a MACD. It's going to tell you the same story. Um, those are their sell signals. It's a trend indicator right here. Um, momentum indicator, I should say. And when the momentum changes and you get those bearish crossovers, they work as a pretty good sell signal. So that's something to be on watch for. You can see the PPO is starting to already roll over. It looks uh, like we may get a crossover. We're overbought. So the risk to reward in, in crude oil isn't very good right now. I made a post in the trading room, you know, member get it right. And I agree with um, the, the analysis that get it right posted is that uh, we're probably going to get another leg down in crude oil prices. And uh, we were really actually talking about about um, the uh, export, uh, the EMP exploration and production stocks. You know, the, the ETF is XOP, and so I'm looking for another leg down in that one, and that'll probably coincide with another leg down in crude. And then at some point here, I'd probably be stepping in, and I don't want to digress, but I will show you that chart, show you what I'm talking about for those of you that don't have access to the trading room. Uh, I drew out a scenario, something like this. Uh, see another leg down here, maybe back test this yellow downtrend line. But uh, the white line that you see there, that is, uh, would give us, if we get down to these targets I have here, a target zone about 29.24 down to 23.80, uh, could see a reversal there. And if so, we'd have a little bit more downside. And that would give us that nice bullish divergence that I like to see on the um, indicators, the PPO and RSI. Just as back here, we had negative divergence at the high. Um, right there, I meant to use another boxing tool, but you can see it. So negative divergence and that marked the top. We had positive divergence here and uh, actually goes off to the side of the screen there. There was bullish divergence and that marked the low. So I think the energy sector is setting up for a, a nice bottom, but uh, my target zone, as you can see, it comes back here. To, I'm making a mess of these annotations, guys. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see. This is this is sort of the uh, target support zone that I'm looking at. So maybe a little more downside there, and then it might be time to step and engage the energy sector. Um, I, as I mentioned, you know, nat gas might lead the way, but I see a little more downside in oil. All right, let's fly through the rest of these. Uh, wheat. I've covered the ag commodities uh, extensively in recent months and really throughout the year. Um, we've had some great trading opportunities. They've been trading very well to the technicals, you know, meaning you get a downtrend line here, this yellow falling wedge. We had a breakout. This was an official trade, went all the way up here, hit our third target. I had a potential long-term target up there, which was effectively hit. We reversed a little shy of it, but uh, that wasn't an official trade. And at the time, I did a video on all the ag commodities expecting a pullback because they were overbought at resistance. Distance, and that's exactly what's happened. We've we've come down to about the longest end of the expectation of where I thought these would correct to. However, the charts still look constructive. Uh, we put in a big divergent low back here. I think that was the initial breakout, and I see this line here, this white horizontal line around seven dollars. Um, is a pretty significant support level, and I think. Um, Wheat looks good, and I may add this one back as an official trade idea. I'm looking at a potential bullish PPO cross. I can see the PPO just starting to curl back up now. We didn't quite reach oversold, but then again, I don't want to see it. I'd rather not. If the trend is up, what you want to see now, you're going to see uh, during an, a primary uptrend, you're going to see overbought readings become more overbought, stay overbought. As the RSI approach is oversold, it'll either reverse back up shy of that or any tag of the oversold level will be fleeting. Again, that's assuming that wheat has bottomed and this is the early stage of a new um, longer term uptrend, primary uptrend, which I believe it will be. And if that's the case, then um, we'll look, you know, in the coming months to possibly years, look to buy any over oversold readings, um, you know, if, if everything else confirms that it's not just oversold that would be a uh, sell signal in itself it's oversold at support if the 60 minute charts confirm the daily charts confirm etc 
All right, moving on, USO, there's crude oil. Uh, one of the more popularly traded crude ETNs, I should say. This downtrend line is what I'm looking at here. I see us coming up to resistance, downtrend line resistance. I see a what looks to be uh, an impending bearish PPO cross. Again, you can just go back on your chart, look at all the other crossovers, and see what happened to prices afterwards. Uh, we just tagged overbought levels, and we're still in a primary downtrend. We're still in a bear market. It's really been a sideways market, or what they call a deer market for the last couple of years, where neither bull nor bear but with that being said since we're not in a strong uptrend um, a single tag of the 70 level it can often prove to be the end of a run uh, until we're in a primary uptrend so again I'm expecting a little more downside in, in crude oil in the coming days to weeks here and then it might be another uh, time to step in especially in the energy stocks JJG, this is a grains ETN. Uh, we had this bullish falling wedge right here defined by these two lines. Breakout back test. As I said, just beautiful, you know, technical analysis at its finest. These are, you know, well-defined levels and prices acted very well off there. We were that low was that wedge was confirmed with a divergent low back here. And we had a heck of a run. I mean, that's, uh, you know, just a grain ETN with various grains in there. And it popped 14% in just, a, what, a week or two, a couple weeks? It's come back in. But what I'm looking at on this is I noticed that, you know, this this looks like a, a, an ETN that's trying to pound out a bottom here. Uh, it keeps finding support at these levels. So uh, I can see the PPO curling back up. Um and I don't see any reason to step in. I think you can step in now. We've we've come almost to those lows. Um, and you step in with a stop, you know, on a solid break or close blow here, especially if you're a long-term trader. And I will try to um, identify some specific entry points. I have to take a look at the 60-minute charts. Um, I apologize. I've been consumed with some of the programming changes and updates on the website late in the last few days. So uh, I haven't had time to really go into detail or update the trade ideas or post put up new trade ideas as, as often as I usually do. So hopefully we'll be done with all that soon. So there it is. Uh, just one thing to add. You can also notice uh, you can draw a nice downtrend line there. So there, that could be another, if you're waiting for a buy signal, uh, pop above that downtrend line. And uh, let's go on to the next one, UGA. That's is a gasoline fund, P bearish PPO crossover. So that one's probably going to fall with crude oil. You know, gasoline will trade, you know, not, not, dollar to dollar but roughly close in line with the course crude prices there's corn um this just looks like a you know a commodity that's bottoming here i see this range support level around 1850 at least on the etn here on corn and again I, i'll look at the uh, charts and i have looked at the charts they do confirm of the actual commodity you know the futures prices and all that so the story on this one let me clear those lines out this was a trade before uh, looks like we hit this or at least a trade idea whether it was official or unofficial i can't recall uh, i've been doing so much uh, coverage on these uh, ag commodities in recent months um, but the bottom line is this is a very significant uh, resistance level and this if i take let me get rid of that line for you uh, what I'm looking at here is this large basing pattern here. Um, now, obviously, it would be bearish if we break below there, uh, especially if we took out those 2016 lows. But as of now, um, the objective play here or trade, if you will, on corn is you buy it on pullbacks to the support level. So you go long here uh, with stops somewhat below. Uh, again, I'll, I may add this as an official trade idea. It's a little bit until it breaks out of this range. It's you know you're you're looking at probably shorter term time frames. Uh, it's not going to trade around sideways forever. Nothing ever does. But uh, as of now, you know this is what a swing trader can do: you buy at the bottom and sell at the top of the range. But sooner or later, I'd be looking for a breakout uh, above this pattern. That would be quite bullish. Um, and again, as I said, a breakdown would be bearish, but we had a divergent low here and we had a divergent low back there as well. You can see the nice run off that divergent low and we had a nice, you know, quick run off that divergent low. Uh, so again, another one that looks uh, to be bottoming. JO, the coffee ETN, um, just a nice, strong, powerful run. Again, beautiful example of technical analysis divergent low back here we had that little washout you know fake out stop running move in coffee but it was followed by a very powerful thrust up and uh, that was an official trade that I believe we had the stops clipped on that that flush out move the official stops and some of you I know probably gave it some room there 
and uh, it's already hit that second target. And you can see why that target was set. We have resistance there, resistance there, reactions, reactions. So that was a resistance level. Um, but this one still looks good longer term. So maybe we come back in soon, maybe not. Um, don't ever underestimate just how fast this can go up. I mean, we had a trade in this one. Uh, was it last year? Um, it must not be on this chart. And we had a trade in coffee, and that thing shot up like a rocket. It was in the last couple of years. Uh, some of these commodities are are pretty pretty um, sensitive to um, you know quick shifts in you know weather conditions, things that affect the uh, crops, uh, supply, demand issues. Uh, here's soybeans. We had a beautiful ball. Uh, bullish falling wedge with a divergent low breakout again this is straight out of the textbook a lot of these breakouts recently and um, you know they were all highlighted in advance these patterns and it was also said you know in that update a few weeks back that the commodities you know, look like they were ready to come back in that the risk reward wasn't too attractive and you can see that soybeans has come right back to a nice support zone I have a you know, a lot of lines on the chart, but what I'm looking at are all these reactions here. I'm looking at all these reactions here, going to the left of the chart now back about two years, a lot of reactions. These were trades before. Uh, so this is support. So now what you have uh, is, you know, we had a bullish breakout. The first thrust up, usually you don't just get one and done. Uh, sometimes you do, but uh, I'm expecting something along the lines of this. Uh, another run up challenge these highs here this would be a nice swing target uh, you can see the reaction highs back here in SOYB and you're talking from where we're at now a move of about 10 percent of course you trade futures their leverage you can get a lot more than that in there um, you know bang for your buck BAL this is cotton and uh, in the recent updates I talked about this uh, consolidation zone here at support you can see how it's acted as support back here here resistance back here and um, believe I would have mentioned a breakout there would be bullish and that's exactly what we've had so it's been moving up next stop is right here this this line is at uh, 4790 and again, I like to confirm my entries and exits with the charts of the futures contracts. Sometimes I'll trade those. Sometimes I'll trade the ETNs. Depends how long I plan to be in the trade. It depends on a lot of a lot of factors, to be honest with you. But uh, you can see we had a divergent high back there. Um, we don't have a divergent low as of yet, but uh, so far it looks pretty good. Not one of my favorites, but again, for a quick trade, you know, if you especially if you were trading futures contracts and you caught that move up five and a half percent, it's pretty good. But I think it's going to run into resistance there if it gets up a little bit higher, 47.90. So there's really not a lot of meat left on the bone if you're not already in that one. Uh, KOL, that actually has different coal stocks. Let's just get off that one. Because uh, what I mean by that is KOL isn't doesn't hold actual coal. It holds uh, coal companies, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, DBA doesn't look so hot, and I'll tell you why. And this is why I don't trade generic commodities um, yeah, ETFs, especially even in this case. You know, I told you I've been overall bullish on the ag commodity sector, but as I've stated and I started at the beginning of this video, there's just you know even in that that subsector of commodities the agricultural commodities there's a lot of differences if we take a look at um, the holdings of DBA which is right here from the PowerShares website you can see the top holding at 16 percent as cattle so as you guys know I've been you know clearly overall you know you know selectively at times you know uh, bullish on wheat soybeans corn uh, where I've been bearish and expecting a pullback in cattle uh, so you have you know different things and as I talk about before you know the uh, you know some of the uh, inputs to feed cattle the, the the cost for the farmers are the same things that when these go up their cost to feed the cattle go up therefore um, that's that's bearish for uh, the, for the um, for the cattle industry uh, so let's take a look at the charts real quick and I'll show you what I'm talking about let's jump forward to cow cow is a livestock total return sub index and as I mentioned here you know in the coverage we've had this resistance level and we had this minor uptrend line broke we had a divergent high right here uh, secondary you know consecutive divergence so we topped out with a powerful oh, or pretty pretty powerful negative divergences at resistance and we broke down we hit the primary uptrend line crawled above it for a little while and we broke down so 
this is why DBA isn't doing hot, despite the fact a lot of those ag commodities have done well. Um, it has, uh, you know, the highest weighting in, in cattle. And uh, you can see there's a little bit more downside left. Uh, so right now, at least if we're looking very near term, I expect more downside in uh, cow uh, or the cattle index. And uh, there's support there. I think we'll grab support, maybe bounce. And we could work our way down lower ultimately to this target here. Uh, let's see what's next. Where did I cut off? I was on JJG. Nope, I did wasn't. I was on DBA. Okay, so there's DBA, just not looking so hot. Although I expect if you're in it, uh, like I said, a lot of the the other components, the ag commodities, look to be uh, having completed or close to completed that correction that I was looking for. So overall, even if cattle drifts lower, you might see this one hold its own. It's, I think it's just dead money trade. Again, I'd rather be selective and pick some individual names. Copper's done well, but it just I wouldn't chase it here. I just don't see any reason. I'd have to study the charts of um, copper futures and spot prices as well. Uh, but not one that I want to chase right now. Uh, cut, here's one that I'm bearish on. Uh, I've been made, that, made that clear for a while now. We've been working our way up in this bearish rising wedge. We just broke down. Let me give you something that you can see a little better. There's a breakdown and cut. That's one of two timber ETFs that I follow. Uh, these are targets down here. Uh, each one where I'd expect a reaction. And right now, 25.75 would be my preferred swing target with 26.80-ish, somewhere in there, minimum target. And here's a chart of uh, WOOD, Wood, telling the same story. This one's finally breaking down. We had a little false break there, whip back in. But you can see the divergence there, negative divergence. In fact, I need to extend my divergence lines. Uh, so that most recent high right here was a divergent high. And I see at least... Um, so I'll tell you right now if you're interested interested in trading this one. I have a support level here, first target around 60.25, but I do think this one will work its way down to about the 58, 60-ish level, uh, at least in the coming weeks to months there. Uh, NIB, this is COCO ETF. Uh, again, divergent low. We had a divergent low here. Nice pop. Looked like this was a trade back here. At least these are targets. So we hit that first target, 26.50. Uh, that reversed from there, put in another divergent low, had another big pop, tradable pop. And what we're seeing here is a, a series of consecutive bullish divergences, uh, positive divergences, while it continues to hold support. So a couple things. You. I mentioned the divergences, and you can see here that this this looks to be another um, commodity ETF that uh, appears to be bottoming. Uh, and if you look at the bigger picture, it looks like it's basing in this range here. Uh, so we're looking at an impending bearish cross on the PPO. Um, pending means it may or may not happen, certainly has turned down and appears that way. So this one may need to come in and it might flounder around in this range, but longer term, be on a lookout for a breakout above that basing pattern. And then ultimately, I think we'll head on up here and maybe test these this level, these highs back here in, in 2016. And again, you'll want to have that confirmed with the, um, the charts of uh, the cocoa futures and spot prices. SGG, this is sugar. Uh, sugar's looking pretty sweet lately. I pointed out this divergent low, very steep bullish falling wedge. Uh, we had divergence, as I stated here, on the RSI. Uh, it burned through the divergence on the PPO, but we still had divergence on the RSI. Nice pop, went up, hit that second target, and then came back in. And this one looks good now. Uh, again, I like to confirm with the charts of the futures contracts, spot prices, which... Uh, uh, Gosh, I think, yeah, yesterday I did look, and I think there it's looking to be setting up nicely. There's a downtrend line, I believe, on Sugar Futures, was I looking at uh, two days ago. Anyways, I'll get back to you guys on that, but uh, there's some support with these previous reactions here. So this one looks objective. I know the PPO is pointing down, but it's in bullish territory right now. It's above the zero line. Um, so you can know you can take a shot right now. Uh, market just closed as I'm as I'm speaking here, but uh, maybe tomorrow if it holds above this level, this horizontal line, take a shot with a stop not too far below, and I think if it holds that level and reverses, it'll continue on up to that third target level I have there around the $33 level, uh, and that's it. Okay, that wraps up my coverage for the commodities, and again. 
uh, as, as things slow down here, I've almost got all the programming updates finished on the site. I've got a few things I need to send off to my programmer, and uh, I'll turn my focus back to these trade ideas and try to get some of these out as official trade ideas with price targets. But as always, um, if you have any questions, just drop me a line in the trading room, uh, chart requests. I'm fine with that, too. Uh, this has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.